Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Punk Synchro in 11 minutes. We're going to be covering the deck profile as well as the combo. Enjoy. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be covering Punk Synchro and here is Hani's deck profile from YCS Hartford. I decided to show this deck list mainly just because it was, uh, I believe, very well thought out and a very good representation of what the deck typically looks like. Uh, Hani was one of the, the first people to be, play this deck at the first event that this um, Punk Adventure deck was legal. And so I figured uh, who, who better than to showcase uh, this version of the strategy. Uh, there's also important to note that there is a second version of this deck where it plays Yazi um, and Herald. And that's also another combo that um, Christian Urena played. But primarily, we're just going to be showcasing you guys how this uh, deck functions and how this deck ultimately works. So you guys can learn how to play it as well. So let's get right into it. In terms of the deck list, we have uh, three of the Foxy Tune. Um, just to delve a little bit deeper into uh, what the deck profile didn't really cover, um, the Foxy Tune is a card that allows you to get access to more level threes than normal. Um, what I mean by that is typically the ratio that people play is one Foxy Tune, one Zayamin, and then one Dia Note. Um, but Hani decided to play a bigger version of this uh, package mainly because uh, Foxy Tune is an additional tuner extender. So, and if you know anything about this deck, which I'll showcase right after. The combo and the way this deck works is all you need is Rites of Our Measure, a tuner, um, a tuner extender, and a normal summon, or two bodies uh, with a tuner uh, to get access to healthy Fibrax. And that typically gives you like the full board. Um, and if you, you know, hit extra stuff with your mills, you can end on like bigger boards as you, um, you know, as you check the Chaos Ruler and like the, the Vampire mills. So that's the first thing that's important to know about this deck list. Uh, the second. Uh, component of this deck is that he decides to play Sangan uh, as his normal summon and the main reason he chose this is because of the fact that it ha it's a level 3 monster that can pair really well into Cherbini and it's also a normal summonable monster that gives you access to uh, a tuner extender in the form of Arborea. Uh, this monster can summon itself from the hand to a zone that a link monster points to. That effect does not activate. Um, it's pretty much just happens. Um... Where it's a, uh, it's basically a quote unquote an inherent summon, which just doesn't start a chain. It just summons itself onto the board immediately, and that allows you to basically turn Sangha into a one card Hulky Fibrax, which helps you meet the condition for rights plus um, one card Hulky Fibrax or a way to Hulky Fibrax to end on like the the board, which is typically a Barone plus uh, Fiber Dagda to Cyphok your opponent. Right, that's typically the game plan of the deck. Um, the win condition, which we should clearly identify, is uh, Artifact Scythe, uh, locking your opponent out of the extra deck, while also um, has other alternate win conditions um, in form of like its extra deck, such as you know Access Code and Appalooza. Um, you also just have like a bunch of negates that the deck can set up. So even if you don't Scythe lock your opponent against like trap decks, you can just set up a bunch of interruptions, and that's also very powerful and very potent. Um, so those are like mainly the, like the win condition of the decks, either to OTK your opponent with access code um, uh, or just lock, out, lock them out of the game completely. Um, and the deck plays a lot of non-engine slots, as you can see here, almost about like f 14, um, 13 if you don't include driver, uh, which probably you probably shouldn't. But it's about like 13 non-engine slots, which uh, gives you a very high percentage to open uh, two non-engine. Uh, typically, like the, the higher amount of non-engine slots is dictated by like just how powerful the decks are in the format and basically your goal of like essentially stopping them. The other important thing that you should note about this deck list is that he decides to play Gamma. The main reason for playing Gamma in this in this deck is mainly because you have a lot of ways to like bait your opponent um, Ash Blossom. So you have like Teleports, you have uh, Water Enchantress, uh, you have Foxy Tune. So basically like uh, Foolish Burial. So multiple, multiple ways to bait your opponent's Ash Blossom. Uh, bait your opponents like droll if you know you go like enchantress effect they droll you and that allows you to basically gamma your opponent which makes your opponent go super minus because gamma by itself is um on your own turn a way to hulky firebrex by itself it also just makes a chaos thriller it's just a very powerful card um in general and now we'll look into the extra deck so you'll see that he decides to play Omirage, uh cherubini Omirage is a really good way to convert a sangan um into a one card fiber uh, you play cherubini because um First of all, it it has a really cool protection effect that people forget about, which is monsters this card points to cannot be destroyed by card effects. 
So what this means is that if you can establish Tribuny and then activate rights and put the right token in a zone that Tribuny points to, you can actually protect it from getting token collected and destroyed by token collector's effect, uh, which is really, really neat. Uh, you have Dagda, obviously, to get access to your Scythe Lock. Hockey Fibrax to uh, enable like the Red Rose combo. Uh, Selene and Access Code to help you OTK. Uh, you play Valor and you play Snow, so you have a bunch of ways to get Spellcaster monsters for Selene. Uh, you play uh, uh, Honey chose to play Appaloosa for this event uh, just because like it was a really good just backup plan if he couldn't kill his opponent and needed to set up interruptions, especially against like decks like Tritron. Um, so he played this. Uh, Link Karibo, I think this card is a, a flex spot in my opinion. This is a card that you can easily interchange for something else. Uh, Zombie Vampire, uh, this is another reason his idea was to like mill as many cards as possible and get access to both Snow and Collector in the graveyard so that even if he gets interrupted by Dark Ruler or Droplets, like he still has some sort of interaction with his opponent um, as well as like hand traps. And you also get to see what your opponent is playing when you activate Zombie Vampire. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you play TG Wonder Magician for the Hulky Fibrax to summon. Uh, you play Barone. You play Chaos Ruler, uh, Hot Red Dragon, Archer and Abyss, uh, Psychic and Punisher. Um, this was mainly a tech that uh, is, you can, so it's a Synchro 11. Uh, not a lot of Synchro 11s in the game, but this is a very powerful one where if you play against the Despia matchup and they set up Double Masquerade and you burn a bunch of life points, you can use Foxy Tune plus Aemon uh, to make a Synchro 11 in the form of Psychic and Punisher. And this monster is basically unaffected by your opponent's um, activated effects, which is really nice. Um, and during the battle phase, it gains attack equals to the difference in your life points and your opponent. So it gets really, really big, and it's really, really hard to out. So uh, this was basically like a tech choice like against like the Masquerade decks or like the Despia decks. And Shooting Riser, uh, another crucial combo piece. Like just a notable mentions, like I think Vampire is one of like the flex spots with Appalooza. Um, some people don't play Karibo, they play Anima instead. Uh, and, and that's something to keep in mind as well. If you're playing the Mare Mare version, you probably have to play Karibo, but uh, I think this is one of the cards that would probably change where you would play Link Karibo, you would play Anima over Link Karibo. And now we'll just get into the combo. Uh, then you want to go Normal Summon Sangan or any way to like Fiber, as you can see here. Make Almirage. Uh, go Chainlink 1 Sangan, Chainlink 2 Faithful Venture to play around um, Droll as well as Ash Blossom on the Sangan because you really want to guarantee your access to a Tuner Monster. Um, this is going to get Chainlink 2 is going to resolve, which gets you Draco back. And then Chainlink 1 Sangan is going to resolve to get you Arborea. You're then going to activate the effect of Faithful Venture to get access to your Griffin. Um, you're then going to pitch the Draco back and then use the Draco back's effect to re equip. It's important to note that. In certain scenarios, you can actually choose to uh, hold the Draco back in your hand and pitch like a Valor instead if you're afraid that your opponent has like Mystic Mind or something along those lines. But just from a basic combo perspective, this is how it resolves. You go Special Griffin, Special Arborea, make Fiber, uh, use Fiber's effect to summon Red Rose. You'll then make a Synchro 10 with the Red Rose and the Griffin. And here, Red Rose effects is going to be triggering, which allows you to special summon a Rose Dragon from your deck. Um, and you're going to be summoning Rox Rose. Rox Rose will then trigger to get you the Basil Rose Shoot. Uh, from here, you use both of these and you turn them into a Shooting Riser. Um, you're going to use Shooting Riser's effect to send you access to either Snow or Collector. Uh, depending on, like, uh, if you know your opponent's playing Sword Soul, you would send Collector. Game 1 Blind, you would just send Snow. Activate Basil Rose Shoot to bring back another Rose Dragon. And then here, you use both of these to make Dagda. Now, you're going to be passing to your opponent's turn. And in terms of interruptions, uh, in main phase one, you can go Hulky Firex Effect, chain the Dagda, set Artifact Scythe. And then go Chainlink 1 Wonder Magician to pop the Scythe. It destroys itself. Activate Scythe Effect to bring itself back. Activate Scythe, now you've scythe your opponent. And then you also have a Snow in the Graveyard as another form of interaction, as well as a Baron Negate, to protect your Hulky Fibrax and Dagda um, from, uh, from, not, from not resolving, essentially. So that's pretty much like the basic combo. Uh, I wanted to just make this as an introductory video for those of you who are not familiar with how this deck works uh, and like what the basic combo line looks like. I will be making a more advanced version of this video, so if you are interested in that, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll definitely work on getting that out for you guys. For example, 
the things that I'll be covering in the advanced video will be things like how to um, play around Dark a little more, how to play around like droplets, um, how to play around like X, Y, and Z hand traps. And I think that'll be very beneficial for you guys as well. Let me know if you're interested in these kind of things and I will do them for other decks as well. So if you have other decks in mind that you also want me to showcase, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.